revolution as a teenager, but first I want to give you a little bit of background on why I'm here today. So, This is me and Jordan in 2013. Um, I'm on the left. I'm the person. And um, we, my mom and I went to Jordan after we had, I think it was a few months after we had first moved to the Middle East. And that was crazy for me. I had never been there before, and the first time I was going was to move there. So we packed our bags, and we moved 7,000 miles away from our home in Washington, D.C. to Qatar, which is right above Saudi Arabia. So, you know, of course, we had never really been to this region before. I was so excited to get out there, start traveling. Um, so like I said, a few months into it, we just thought, why not go to Jordan? You know, it's beautiful there. But for those of you who don't know, Jordan is surrounded by conflict. Um, its borders touch Iraq, Syria, and the West Bank. So because of this, they have had so many refugees come into their country to live, to set up tents. Um, you know, completely they had to abandon their old way of life. But I didn't really know all of this before I went there. So that was definitely shocking to me. So like I said, we were in Jordan. And on our first day, we were driving from Amman to Petra. Amman is the capital, and I'm sure you've all heard of Petra, one of the seven wonders of the world. And it's a long drive, so we pulled over on the side of the road and to get coffee, we were thirsty. And I noticed that someone was looking at me, and you know when you can tell someone is staring at you? And I thought, that's kind of weird. You know, I'm, <laughs> I've only been in this region for a few months, what's going on? So I turned around and looked, and I saw a girl who couldn't have been much older than me, and she was just looking at me very intently. And so it kind of occurred to me, like, here's this girl, we live completely different lives. You know, she's standing in front of this makeshift tent. You could infer that she was probably a refugee. We had completely different lives, but I was like, well, is she educated? Does she have the same dreams as me? And this all happened within like 30 seconds of awkward eye contact with this person that I don't know. And so a man came out of the tent, made a few hand gestures, she went in. I never saw her again, but my driver, the driver that had been, was driving us from Amman to Petra, kind of noticed that we were kind of looking at each other. And I was like, wow, like, do a lot of girls my age live like that with their families? And he said, oh, no, that's in broken English. He said, that's probably not her father, that's probably her husband. And he was much older. And that was the first time it occurred to me that girls my age are getting married. I was 15 at the time. And girls younger than 15 are getting married as well. So I took this information. Um, I went back home to my new home in Doha, Qatar. Six months later, I went to Tanzania to help build an orphanage that my school had previously set up a few years ago. And this was the second time that I had run into girls who didn't have the same educational opportunities as me didn't have the same opportunities to succeed, to follow their dreams. But again, I didn't do anything because I didn't feel like my voice meant anything. I was 15, I was a girl, like I didn't think that I could do something impactful. And eventually I was just like, you know what? No, I'm just gonna try it. All I'm gonna do is start a club. And I'll speak a little bit more about Girl Up later. I think there's a Girl Up club actually at this school, but um, I'll speak a little bit more about that later. But I was like, you know what, no, like, I want to start a revolution. So, next slide, please. When you think of revolution, you probably think the French Revolution um, probably makes you think about all the notes you had to take in history class about the American Revolution. You know, you don't really think about us in the mix with that word. It invokes these images of horrible, bloody wars that were fought hundreds of years ago. But I think that we can redefine this term, kind of make it more modern. What is a revolution today, right? A revolution is standing up to harmful cultural practices, um, I think societal norms that we don't think are okay, are fair, and each one of us has the opportunities and the power to do that. So, slide please. There are five steps, personally. I mean, you can do it however you want, but this is how I think you'll get the most benefits. I think you'll be able to do it the best this way. So yeah, there are five steps. And the first one is ask the important questions. What's an issue that you care about? There has to be one thing that you care about so much, right? That you can't imagine waking up in the morning not thinking about. 
Or maybe not yet, maybe you haven't had that moment of realization yet, but you will. Um, why does it require a change? Again, finding that one thing that makes you feel so passionate that you actually want to do something, why does it require that necessary change? Why are, why are you important in that situation? And then finally, is there like an organization that's already working on it? I think this is the most important thing because it is hard, like a, a speaker actually recently said, um, the first step is the hardest step. It's hard to start your own movement alone. It's very hard. So if you go out and find these organizations that are already focusing on the things that you care about, you can start to work with them, you know, use them as a stepping stone, but also for support. So. Yeah, that's why I want to come to Girl Up. Girl Up has changed my life completely. Um, they are the reason that I feel like now I have a voice that I can use to stand up for people whose voices aren't being heard. Like I said, I didn't think that my voice mattered as a 15-year-old girl, and Girl Up proved me wrong. Um, so for those of you who don't really know, Girl Up is a leadership education-based program that works with the United Nations or United Nations Foundation program. Um, in developing countries and you know they recognize that a girl has inherent worth but it's not just the girls fight it's boys girls men women um, whatever somebody identifies as gender wise it's everybody coming together in order to start a movement so I found girl up and I thought hey like that's exactly what I want to do I want to be one of I want to be a teen advisor I wanted to be a teen advisor so bad because they were doing what I wanted to do. They were going to the United Nations. Um, they were speaking at huge events in front of CEOs and world leaders. And I was like, that is exactly what I want to do. So I joined them and they, yeah. So I joined them and they kind of helped me along with this process of feeling like I wanted to start a revolution. So number two is, I think this might be the most important. Um, find your people, who are your people? When I started my Girl Up Club in Qatar, they had never had one in the country before. There were only about four in the region, so it was very new. Um, but you need to find that group of people who feel an equal amount or even more passion than you do about an issue. Um, for example, in Qatar, I teamed up with girls from all over the world, you know, Australia, Lebanon, Sudan, like Palestine. It was crazy. It was so cool because these girls had different experiences that, and boys that they were bringing to the table that I had never had. I didn't know anything about what was going on in their country, but they brought that information to the table and that made us stronger. And it doesn't have to be to that extent. It can also just be people who live in a different neighborhood than you, who have different ancestry. Anybody that's had, like everybody has a different story. So you're always bringing a diverse, new experience to the table when you kind of get a group of people together, you know, because everybody is different. So yeah, definitely you need to find your people. It doesn't have to be friends. Reach out across the table. Reach to people that you have never talked to before, but have this shared common passion. So uh, number three is also quite important. Find your message. What is your message? What I want to say about message is I think the most important thing is that you're not building your message on a foundation of pity because pity is absolutely not an emotion that makes productive tangible work you know so for example if you say that you pity someone that's kind of like saying like oh i have a good and they have a bad i feel bad for them but you automatically create that us versus them mentality that doesn't work in the larger scheme of things. So you might be able to start a bit of a movement, but you need to recognize that everybody is equal to each other. <coughs> Excuse me. And so that's why I always say, find your message. Your message should be care. You care about somebody, right? When you care about somebody, you're saying, you're equal to me. We both deserve the same opportunities. And I care about you as a human being. I'm concerned, but we're equal. Um, I definitely, also, you need to make sure that your messaging is reaching out to everybody, because I definitely had this issue, you know, when you start a gender equality movement, a lot of times there are boys who think 
that they're not included, that they don't have a role, but that's not true. Um, everybody has a role in the gender equality movement, and I had to change my messaging drastically. I mean, my principal told me that I couldn't have pink posters because it would only attract girls. So you have to take into account, remember what your movement is, but take into account who you want to be there and why you think, like what your foundation is and why you think it's an important movement, but make sure you message it correctly. So. Concrete actions, very important as well. You need to make sure that you're raising money, awareness. This is actually pretty easy. You just have to, believe it or not, the easiest thing you can do, send a tweet. Post something on Instagram, it's so easy, there's not an excuse to do nothing because every single person in this room has, we actually have the ability to do so much more than that, but the fact that we can just post something on social media and start a conversation is really taking that concrete action. So. Finally, I think expect the unexpected is the most important, I've said a lot of things that are important, I think they're all equally important, but Expect the unexpected is something that's going to hit you at a time that you don't expect it, obviously unexpected, and you have to learn how to come back up from that. Um, I struggled so much with getting people to understand what I was doing and why I cared about gender equality. It was really hard. Um, I think the pinnacle of it all was the Malala Fund posted a picture of me on their Instagram in October 2014. And I was wearing shorts because I took it in South Carolina during the summer, so it was pretty hot. And someone commented on the picture saying, like, put on some pants, wear your pants, get out of our country if you don't think it's, like, equal or whatever. So, you know, I, didn't never, I never expected it to spread to social media because I was having some negative comments in class, but now and again. But I never expected it to be from people I didn't know. So you just need to learn that those experiences are the ones that you can take and you, after your initial reaction, you can be upset, but you're the one who decides how that is going to affect you later on. How is that going to make you a stronger person? How is it going to motivate you? Every single negative comment that someone makes about you, you need to turn that into a positive, and that's completely in your power. So, I kind of want to end today by asking you, I know you've been asked to do so many things today, but I think really just Find that one issue, cause, that you care about so much, and it doesn't matter where you learn about it. You don't need to be face-to-face -face with poverty. You can read about it in the news, um, see a social media post. Just find that one thing that makes you feel like you want to make a difference. Find your people, do your messaging, get your concrete actions down so you can say that you actually did something. And yeah, so find your purpose, and then all together, that makes a revolution. So. Thank you.